Welcome back. How is technology changing the way that healthcare professionals are treating COVID and fighting this pandemic? We've got some information for you from Kelly Anderson with a conversation I had with her recently right now. Let's take a look. Right now, our nation's brightest scientific minds, most innovative companies, and leading universities are moving at unprecedented speed to deliver the COVID-19 treatments, vaccines, diagnostics, and cures that we need. The scope is as impressive as the speed. What's been the private sector's role in bringing the science to life and bringing it to people? Well, joining us with answers is the Senior Director of Health and Drug Policy at the U.S. Chamber's Global Innovation Policy Center, Kelly Anderson. Kelly, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me on, Christine. So what type of COVID-related research is happening right now in our community? Yeah, so you know, I think people may be surprised to learn that the search for safe and effective treatments for COVID-19 is very much a local news story. You know, at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, our data shows that there's over a thousand clinical trials taking place across all 50 states, and that's in both big cities and in small towns. In fact, statewide right now, there are 50 clinical trials happening in Utah. Um, and this research that's been happening there and across the country has really enabled the discovery of new therapeutics and vaccines for conditions where no treatments previously existed, as was obviously the case with COVID-19. You know, across the country over the last 10 months, we've seen more than half a million Americans have rolled up their sleeves to participate in these clinical trials. And that's been absolutely essential to delivering life-changing solutions to healthcare providers and patients alike. And these vaccines were developed in record time. Can people trust that they are safe? Yeah, you know, I think it's important to say at the outset, people can and should trust that they're safe and effective. You know, I'm somebody that's immunocompromised, so I can appreciate the sentiment behind some of the skepticism about these vaccines. I honestly had questions for my doctor too. Um, but first, I think it's important to understand that these vaccines are new, so they were not developed overnight. You know, the technology used in the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine dates back to the 1990s. And it's because of the policy framework that we have in place here in the US, which includes strong intellectual property protection, that has allowed innovators to really harness the power of mRNA technology. So, you know, while these vaccines were developed in record time, they're the result of decades of scientific research that's been applied successfully during the pandemic. And then second, you know, as we've heard Dr. Fauci so aptly note, Medical advancements that previously took years can now take place in a fraction of that time without compromising safety. So while we currently have two authorized vaccines, there are dozens more in the pipeline, all of which have followed a very rigorous protocol for U.S. regulatory approval. And it's also, I think, important to note that the safety review is ongoing. You know, the CDC and the FDA continue to monitor these vaccines for their safety and efficacy over the long term. And how has business and government teamed up to fight against COVID? Yeah, you know, I think it's really been an all hands on deck effort, unlike really any we've ever seen before. Um, I would say at the outset of the, of the pandemic, the chamber recognized that we're not gonna be able to return to work um, until we return to health. Um, and it's gonna take all of us working together as a community to achieve that goal. So, you know, while these medicines were developed at such an unprecedented speed, that's in large part because of the great uh, public-private sector collaboration that we've seen over the last 10 years. Um, you know, I think government and universities often contribute to the initial clinical research, and then the private sector chips in by contributing its vast expertise at conducting the clinical trials, manufacturing the medicine, and then bringing those medicines to patients. And, you know, these partnerships, I think, are going to be especially needed given the rapidly changing landscape that we're seeing now uh, with these new virus variants emerging. But I think it's important for consumers to know that, you know, the innovative community absolutely followed the science to the discovery of these two vaccines that we have now, and they're going to continue to do so to make sure that they remain effective against all the variants of the virus that we're now seeing. You know, because at the end of the day, we're really all in this together. What resources are available to learn more about vaccines and treatments and development? Yeah, absolutely. So the Chambers developed a series of resources and tools. Um, so we have a state-by-state -state breakdown of where clinical trials are taking place by the congressional district. And we also have a list of frequently asked questions about the vaccine. And where can we get more information? Yeah, I would encourage your viewers to go to uschamber.com and you can learn more about this all of the nation effort to defeat COVID-19. Will do. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for this important conversation about the vaccine, COVID-19, and the fight in our community. Thank you so much.